All right, what's up, everybody? So uh, I'm here with uh, Anna from uh, Banana Lifts. Um, I did get your name right, right, Anna? Anna. It's okay. confusing with the H on the end. <laughs> Anna, okay. Yep. Okay, cool. So um, I'm here with Anna from Banana Lifts, and we're going to talk about uh, uh, vegan powerlifting and a little bit of uh, nutrition and uh, advocating for social causes and stuff like that. Um, so Anna, if you want to give like a quick overview of like, you know, who you are, what you do when you got into veganism, powerlifting, what kind of led you down that route, stuff like that. Sure, sure. So um, as you mentioned, my name's Anna. I'm from right outside of the DC area and I grew up there. And then I went to school in Western Massachusetts at Amherst College. I applied early and played lacrosse for a few years there. And then after I studied abroad in Rome, I decided to not play lacrosse anymore and that's when I got more into lifting and so I did some bodybuilding style type training but it was really just me doing it on my own and then after I graduated I actually had a plan to become a psychologist and so I got into clinical research and then moved back to DC and was working for the VA um, and while I was there I definitely realized that I did not want to do <laughs> not want to do that and so um, I actually got a job in healthcare recruiting and so that's more of what I do from a professional standpoint um, now I work for a private equity firm here in New York and I moved to New York about two years ago. While I was in DC though, I joined a gym called Balance Gym. A lot of people know Balance um, because Meg Squats started there, Daniela Mello trained there, um, and oh, just yeah. a few other kind of bigger power lifters. And so um, I joined the gym not knowing anything actually about powerlifting, um, but there was a cohort of women who were all lifting. And so um, I noticed they were really strong, they loved it, and one of them was going to host a meet. And so she asked if I wanted to do it just because she saw that I was lifting again, just doing some bodybuilding work. And I decided that, yeah, why not? And I really had no idea what I was getting into. And so <laughs> about <clears throat> three and a half years later, I've done seven or so competitions, my most recent one being at Raw Nats, which was in Chicago. Um, along the way, so following kind of graduation and whatnot, I decided to go vegan. And the main reason that I got into veganism is that I was always really interested in nutrition and always interested in food ever since I was much younger. But there are a number of chronic illnesses in my family, especially on my mother's side. Um, so everything ranging from different types of cancers to kind of diabetes, but really what you see throughout the US more broadly. And so um, at that same time, my mom was also diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's. And so it became really apparent to me that figuring out the best way to control um, one, your lifestyle so that you could build a healthy life and, and hopefully impact your longevity became very important to me. And so I went vegan basically because of that. I was uh, really motivated by a lot of the research and then also loved that there was one way to eat where you could also have a positive impact um, on the planet and on animals. So it was really for nutrition kind of reasons at first. Um, but over the years, I've stayed vegan definitely because of the impact on animals and the impact uh, really on, on the planet. Mm -hmm. And um, over the years, it's definitely been fun also to lift and to be vegan. I get a lot of questions <laughs> about how I, I make that work. Um, but I feel really confident um, in how I've been able to grow and, and maintain weight and, and gain strength. Um, but also my coach um, who's been in the space for a while, he's one of the OG kind of powerlifters, him and his whole family are vegan, he holds uh, state records, and so it, it feels good to have him in my corner. And then also, um, just in terms of other care, my PT is very supportive of it, uh, the doctors I see are very supportive of it, and so uh, maintaining kind of, one, your professional life really, really um, a high level of intensity in terms of training has been has been okay so that's yeah. that's the gist <laughs> of everything but I'll <laughs> stop there no that was a great intro um 
Yeah, and shout out to uh, Clinton from Physio Strength because I went to him for a little bit too. He's he's like yeah, awesome he's guy. so great. I lo I love Clinton, and I've had hip problems, I've had knee problems, I've had most recently a hamstring problem, and so I really love his kind of philosophy around it, and that he's a powerlifter. He's also a cool guy, so yeah. <laughs> I think I just saw you give him like a, a shout out on Instagram or something maybe. And yeah. I, I totally forgot to follow him on um, Instagram before. So I, I gave him a follow and I saw one of his videos and uh, just talking about like back pain and stuff. And, uh, yeah. you know, I, I think I told you, but I was going through a big back pain issue. Like, yeah. like you're, you know, pretty much like for almost a year, a little while ago, it just started to get better like four months ago. And wow. he helped me a lot through it. And just the, yeah. uh, the psychology behind pain science right. and stuff like I like the way he, how he deals with that so that's totally. uh yeah he's a he's an awesome guy yep he's great uh who's your coach out of curiosity because I didn't know he was vegan yeah Bill McCarthy is my coach he goes by get the lift um on okay. Instagram and so actually when so I went vegan in April 2016 and mm -hmm. as I was doing that I've just always been kind of a research nerd whenever I decide to make a change and so I wanted to find out as much as I could about being an athlete and being vegan and he's mm -hmm. one of the top searches actually on Google and so before I decided to actually be coached by him I knew just about his journey with it why he decided to so I think um, he's been vegan now for over a decade oh, uh, wow. maybe a little bit longer than that yeah okay so Bill, Bill McCarthy, is that what you said? Bill McCarthy, yeah, and he's Get the Lift. Um, so he has a whole team of, of folks, um, and he coaches a few other lifters who are much stronger uh, than, than I am. Um, so Leah is an, another one who he coaches um, who's vegan, and she's, I think, top five, top ten in the country. In the country? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's insane. Yeah. Is, she, yeah. is she also vegan or no? Yeah, and she's been vegan over ten years as well. Oh, wow. What's her last name? Yeah. I am going to completely picture it. It's D. Kinsare. I'm, I'm saying it totally wrong, which is embarrassing, <laughs> but I can send you her um, her Instagram after this. Yeah, that's insane. Okay, so wow. Yeah. Top five in the country. That's huge. And you're also strong as hell, though. Like, let's not be, <laughs> let's not be modest. You're like, what are your best lifts? Because like, I saw you lifting some crazy numbers in, in the competitions yeah. and stuff. So. Sure. So I think gym is different than um, in competition, but in the gym, yeah. my best squat is 163 kilos, which I think is right under 360 pounds. Mm -hmm. And then my best gym bench is right under 200 at 198 pounds. And mm -hmm. then my best deadlift is right over 400 um, and I only actually max out deadlift really in competition, um, yeah. which I love about how Bill programs. So yeah, I don't, I think my probably max is a little bit over that. And then my comp numbers from raw Nats, which was October, 2019 mm -hmm. were, oh my gosh, I don't even remember. I think a 325 <laughs> squat, uh, 187 bench and then 402 deadlift. Yeah. That's amazing. 72 kilos. So one. That's 158 body weight <laughs> i'm sorry what was the body weight 158 body weight that's utterly insane that's <laughs> that's so impressive thanks <laughs> yeah when was your last competition so it was raw nats um so okay. that would have been i mean now it's almost a year or so ago but october 2019 okay. i had plans to compete this past spring but with covid and everything all the competitions got halted yeah, so that would have been I think my seventh or my eighth competition. So I try to compete twice a year. Oh, wow. And uh, just because I can relate to this too, like uh, with the whole lockdown situation, training at home, it's been yeah. pretty rough, right? Yeah, it, it was really rough. Um, so for a month and a half, I had my last lift right before the shutdown. So right before March 16th. Mm -hmm. um, and so I didn't lift for... A month and a half but Bill was really great he uh, put together home workout programs and so I can be <laughs> very crazy when it comes to to staying on my program so I didn't yeah. miss any of those lifts 
maybe, maybe one day, but um, I did all of those. And then I was able to rent some equipment from a gym here in Brooklyn. And then at the same time, I was able to buy some equipment from Rogue. So, I mean, I live in a studio in Brooklyn and I do not have a dining room table, but I do have my squat rack next to my bed. I saw that. I saw that. Yeah. I was cracking up. It's like, you're yeah, just squatting in front of your bed. I was talking to a friend yesterday who actually, he helped me move in. And he was like, I've been in your apartment. And the fact that you have that in there <laughs> is crazy. So, yeah. yeah. Um, That's and then I didn't have my though. plates. Like, you can see, they're literally just lined <laughs> up against the wall. So I, I need to get, like, a tree. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so funny. Yeah. But that's like living in New York City. It's like, you get these right. small apartments, you just got to work with it. Right. Totally. totally. <laughs> <laughs> How, where, did you uh, where did you rent the equipment from that wasn't from, from Rogue? Yeah, sure. So I probably shouldn't say because okay. I, I don't know to what extent um, he kind of publicized that, but it was a gym in Crown Heights. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, you got lucky with the Rogue stuff because they sold out like, they, they've been sold out for a while. Yeah, they got they got um, kind of housed in terms of volume and flow. Um, but it seemed as if they were restocking a bunch of the main equipment pieces. So like the squat rack, Mm -hmm. And then you could add on a bench came pretty quickly. And then I had to wait for the bar, mm -hmm. but I had a bit of issue with my plates. Um, so one of them got lost and stuff like that, uh, but it took all in all a month to get everything. Did you, did you get a Laco plates? Is that what I saw? No, they're rogue. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was going to say, cause I, I knew yeah. they were like nice plates, but I forgot which ones they were exactly. And I was like, damn, if you got a Laco plates, you're, you're balling Oh no, out. no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at just for shits and giggles. I was looking at like the comp rack, the Alika one, and I was like, the fact that Squats yeah. and Science has two of these. These got myself yeah. into Squats and Science a little bit more. Yeah, I know. I, I actually I really loved going to that gym. I just, I mean, I'm very frugal with everything, and I got to a point where I'm just yeah. like, I can't afford it. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. But, it's, I mean, that's a good point on the cost of all of this. Um, I try to be pretty good on my budget too, but I have been lifting at Murder of Crows, which is a gym and community that I love. Awesome um, gym, but yeah. yeah, all of the gyms here are just really expensive on top of paying for coaching, which I do separately. And they actually have a nice package where you can get your coaching and your gym access together, but I have a different coach. So that doesn't apply to me. And then also you pay for like your supplements and then you pay to go to the different competitions. Like it, oh, yeah. it adds up. It, it really adds up, especially, um, I, I don't know. Sometimes when I travel, I do want to, at least the night before I lift, make sure I have like a room to myself and everything like that. <laughs> so it's probably not like the most efficient way to travel, but, um, <laughs> yeah that's a great point yeah the, the whole price issue uh, you know the, the cost totally. of piloting in general and especially because like you know unless you're at the very very top of the game you're, you're getting no money for it right and you're just it's all just like a labor of love pretty much like you're just paying the totally. heat you're paying for travel you're paying right. for like, all the equipment and the gym memberships yep so you gotta really love this stuff to really stick with it <laughs> that's what i tell myself too especially when it gets hard i have to remind myself like this is a hobby and it's yeah, something yeah. that I'm actively choosing, choosing to do. Um, but I think in so many ways, it's been beneficial for me outside of the competition piece. Like I mentioned the community at um, Murder of Crows. So mm -hmm. even more recently, um, my mom actually lost her battle with Al Alzheimer's and she passed away um, at the beginning of April. And if I hadn't had them as a, a resource, and if I didn't have them, I wouldn't have been able to get through it. And very similarly, when I was um, at Balance, there was a time when I was moving, moving, um, and there are about six of them that actually helps me move. So I think it's interesting because on Instagram, you see people posting their numbers and you see all these people getting likes and comments. But I think one of the things that has justified the cost for me has been what you get out of the community and, and what you get out of the relationships. Mm -hmm. um, because I mean, when we grow up, you have high school, you have college and all that stuff and you're part of a community, but then all of a sudden you become an adult and yeah. you're like, where, where do I go to make friends? <laughs> like, like, of course you have your core group of friends, but outside of that, you just don't have the same access. So yeah. 
I think in, in a lot of ways it has served, um, yeah, just a, a bigger purpose that I couldn't have imagined mm -hmm. um, otherwise. Yeah, that's a great point. I mean, I kind of had like a brief foray into, <laughs> I guess, more of the competitive level, of, not competitive, that's not the right term, but actually competing in powerlifting and like going yeah. to SNS and I think I was in SS for like maybe six months and I competed only once and I only did a bench only meet because yeah. my back and my, uh, yeah. well, it was my back. I couldn't squat or uh, deadlift, but um, the community is just so awesome. And like, we're all kind of like, you know, we're like a very niche community with powerlifting. Right. And, you know, we're all kind of just, we're all kind of weirdos in our own way. And totally. <laughs> everyone's totally. really, really nice though and supportive. And, right. You know it's good to connect with people on that level like you said because once you graduate college or whatever like right you make friends at work maybe and then where else like you need right. a cool hobby you need a cool community right totally totally so that's a really great point and um i i, I guess i want to ask you a little more about like just while we're on this subject of powerlifting um how do you when you switch to being vegan you were powerlifting already right so, uh, no, I was not. I went vegan two years before I started powerlifting. So I've only powerlifted as a vegan. Uh -huh. um, yeah. So I, I guess I started in 2018 powerlifting. Okay. Did you, but you were lifting before that though, right? Yeah. So I was doing uh, basically my own types of, of programs. Um, uh -huh. Basically I worked with a coach or not a coach, but a trainer out of gold's gym in maryland and so he put something together for me but i was pretty resourceful i mean you can get a lot of stuff just online for free and so i would put together my own types of programs but i was also doing a lot of cardio as well so it was a mix of that and then right. also doing a lot of the typical stuff you see in gyms like stairmasters and yeah and, and all of that stuff when you switched to eating plan based did you just go like overnight pretty much was it like a slow transition or yeah. Good question. So the first time I went vegan, I did it for like three days. And then I was like, oh, no, 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 this is not going to work for me. <laughs> because oh, yeah. I miss I miss like pizza. I miss all of the things that you hear a lot of people bring up as justifications for not going vegan. And mm -hmm. I thought it would just be too hard. And so I did it for a few days. But at my college, again, in Western Massachusetts, pretty kind of crunchy hippie town and so the cafeteria was actually pretty receptive or pretty open to different diets and whatnot and so they had vegan options at everything wow. and so i tried it thought it was stupid and then about a month later after re-watching some documentaries so the typical ones that you hear forks over knives vegetated those mm -hmm. I was like all right let me give this another shot and then yeah I've been I've been vegan ever since okay and that when you actually made the final switch was it just cold turkey all in or like yeah it was cold turkey oh cool okay yeah do you were you worried at all that that was going to make a difference for you know your strength gains or anything well I guess you're you weren't powerlifting then but were you worried about like a difference on body composition at all Oh, totally, totally. Oh, and I had been counting macros at that time for probably two or so years. So I knew enough about how to plan a diet to build yep. muscle. Like it's not enough that like any, any person without formal training would know. Mm -hmm. um, but I was really worried just because when you do searches online or what you hear when you're growing up is protein, 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 and really the disc course around protein is you have to get it from animal sources it's the best most available xyz and so i think i definitely fell into that understandably and i wasn't i wasn't sure what was going to happen <laughs> quite honestly um, i wasn't sure if i was going to wither away or if i wasn't going to be eating enough also quite honestly around that time i was watching a lot of like freely the banana girl on youtube <laughs> and, uh, she was very like raw till 4 like 90 10 10 and, and yep. for people who who are going to listen 90 10 10 is basically 90 percent carbs 10 percent fat 10 percent pr protein mm -hmm. which i do not eat like that at all anymore so i think a little bit of it in the first phases were one i was insecure about what was going to happen to my body two i lacked some of the information mm -hmm. but i was also committed I, I i after just seeing all of the research and and seeing that 
athletes like a Bill McCarthy could be successful. And Bill's a big guy, like he's over 220. So he, he is not, um, he, he's not small by any means um, that they could be successful. That's when I decided to like really figure out um, how I could do it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's a great point. Yeah, because when I first went vegan also, I mean, I went uh, four and a half years ago now. Uh, what, what about mm -hmm. you? When did you, when did you switch over? So April, 2016. Okay. So or 2015, sorry. Yeah. I've been saying the wrong date, 2015. So I just celebrated my five year. Oh, okay. So we went almost, well, you went before me, but roughly the same time. Yeah. There weren't that many people who were really like vegan back then and lifting. Oh yeah. So the fact that you found Bill, like that's probably really, it gave you a lot of motivation. It makes sense. Yeah. A lot, a lot. Um, it was pretty much, him especially because he was in my area mm -hmm. also um Torre Washington. Washington yeah yeah and I ended up meeting him at a veg fest um and oh, he was really awesome. nice and then also Kendrick Ferris who is one of the only men to go to the Olympics is vegan I think his whole family is vegan um so I think that was a lot of motivation for me that mm -hmm. it at least could be done but right. funny enough, one of my friends in college, she was dating a guy who was vegan and I used to make so much fun of him. And growing up, I had friends who were vegans and I was definitely like an asshole about it. So the yep. fact that I've made like a complete 180, yeah. um, I think it's just funny to look back on. We all did it. Like right. <laughs> before we went vegan, we all made fun of it or we were all like, oh, we can't do it because we love cheese too much or whatever. Totally. Yep. <laughs> and then once you make that change, there's like, you're just like, oh, this isn't that, this isn't that different exactly. at all. I mean, right. Yeah. Right. I, like I personally have no, like I was the same as you. I was like, I can't go vegan because I miss pizza. Like, you know, I want right. to eat cheese pizza. And, right. you know, <laughs> once I actually cut it out for a couple of weeks, it really, you'd stop thinking about it. You stop thinking right. as much. Totally. And like what I've found either vegan or not is I typically have like 10 things that I love to eat. I'll eat on a regular basis. And so, uh -huh. After going vegan, I just decided to find those same meals that I would like and that I could meal prep all the time. So mm -hmm. for a while, I was doing a bunch of posts actually on my meal preps. And then I was like, I don't have anything new to post because I, I just, oh posted, my God. I literally eat the same foods all I the time. I relate to that so much. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm like, I, I wish I could go out and like make all this fancy stuff, but yeah. that's just not me. Like I, I eat pretty much the same thing. <laughs> I think that's a lot of other, you know, general lifters too. Like not even just yeah. vegan lifters, but lifters in general. Like they, we always meal prep when we're like content with eating the same thing all the time, as long as we totally. our macros or something. Right, <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. And it sucks because, uh, you know, I post a, I post a lot of recipe videos for a while too, and like I started cooking a lot again because of lockdown. But um, right, I'm content with eating, you know, plain pasta with spaghetti sauce and TVP, and right. like, uh, you know, like stir fry every single day right, right. <laughs> i've yep. been eating oatmeal every single morning like with blueberries bananas protein powder and granola for the past like like four months ever since i got on it and then that's literally like, in my it. fridge right now that it's same like, exact thing it's the best though right <laughs> it is it really is <laughs> yeah it's like i don't know if you're like me where like you'll eat the same thing for like like you know three four five months and then rotate it or if you that's what i do okay yeah, that's, that's exactly what I do. Um, yeah. I've also been on this big ramen kick and, and just like the, the <laughs> little packs of ramen because two of those are like over 700 calories. It has a lot of fat in it, yep. but sometimes I have a bigger appetite than other times, but getting calories in has always been paramount. And so uh -huh. one of the things I've also learned is that a lot of vegan food will be high volume and lower calories. So one thing that a lot of people struggle mm -hmm. with, and me as well, when I first went vegan, I lost a lot of weight. And I was like, how do people do this? And yeah. right now I'm over 72 kilos. So I probably weigh like 165 right now, or maybe 163. So five pounds over my body weight. Mm -hmm. But when I started as a vegan, I was like 140. So I've gained over 20 pounds on a vegan diet. So I think it's funny when people are, are like, I can't, I can't like gain weight. I can't gain weight on a vegan diet or I can't do this and, and yeah. that. Cause like, unless you figure out the right way to do it, it is, it is tough. So anyway, I say all that to say that like those little packs of ramen have come in handy for me. I, uh, ever, <laughs> ever since the lockdown happened, I stocked up on like some ramen just 
you know, just in case, you know, I was kind of yep. paranoid like everybody else. I didn't like go and splurge on toilet paper or anything, but I yeah. did get a little extra food that wouldn't go bad. So I picked up some ramen and uh, I was eating that for like two months, just like throwing in a ton of veggies. and Same. Tofu. <laughs> As long as you like spice it up and like you get yep. other stuff in there, it's so good. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I love the soy sauce flavor one. Um, and one of my buddies who actually lives in Seattle, he's another vegan power lifter. You should follow him. He's Tofu Lifts. He's also a, okay. a pretty big a pretty big guy. So he's over 220 maybe. But anyway, he introduced me to that vegan flavor. And now it's like a staple in my diet. <laughs> what, uh, what brand uh, ramen is that? It's just like the 50 cent ramen. Really? Yeah, oh. the Nisa, I, Nisi, Nisa brand. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Okay. I'm actually going to, um, I want to just write this down really quick so I remember to follow these people. You said Tofu Lifts, right? Yeah. Connor is his name. Okay. And you also said uh, Bill McCarthy is your coach. Yep. And he's got an Instagram? Yeah, Get the Lift. Okay. It's in my bio. Okay. I'll, yeah, I'll find <laughs> Yeah. I mean, anyone who's vegan and lifting, that's, I like, I want to follow them. because it's Yeah. You know, and then Leah, vegan. she's in Brooklyn. Um, and yeah, she's, oh, Leah, right, right, right. Yeah. She's, um, she's very dope. She pole dances. She rode, she like rides her motorcycle again. She's really elite lifter. She's been that around is. it for a long time. Yeah. So, but uh -huh. she's a great, she's been a great person for me to talk to and, and build a relationship with. And now she's coached by Bill too. So it's just funny. Right. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. That's awesome. Um, and then just in terms of like nutrition, I know you said a lot of people ask you about like nutrition and supplements and stuff. Yeah. Um, is what, what's like the most common question you get from people just in general with vegan lift? Cause you also talk to a lot of powerlifters who obviously aren't vegan and stuff. Yeah. Like, what, what do they ask you too? Sure. So it's about protein mostly and protein quality. And so one thing that I try to overemphasize as much as possible is to take a step back from that. Because what people don't realize is that it's calories in versus calories out. But so many people are very lazy when it comes to the nutrition and they don't realize how much of a massive impact it has on their success as a lifter. The same with managing your stress, managing your sleep. So I try to dial it back for people <laughs> first and foremost, because the biggest thing that I've learned is that I have to eat enough. And then from there, especially on a, a vegan diet, making sure that I'm getting a variety of proteins um, so that I can hit all of the different amino acids. So one of the tools that I like to use is Chronometer, which mm -hmm. um, one will lay out all of my calories very similar to a MyFitnessPal. The difference is you do have to pay for it, but it shows you all of your different vitamins, all, all of your minerals, and all of your amino acids, which mm -hmm. is in the grand scheme of things, all of the data that you want. Yeah. And so I think there is a piece of like, okay, am I getting enough calories to, am I getting the right type of, of calories in as well? And then am I hitting enough of the amino acids? And some things that I see online are like, oh, you have to combine foods or you have to do this and you have to do that. And I've never done any of that stuff. Yeah, of course. Like at, at first, I think I would have gotten a little bit of over or would have gotten overwhelmed by it but now as long as I just eat a variety of foods I hit it pretty easily and I mean I do supplement as well so like I'll have protein powders and and everything like that um I'm also pretty really like I have a um vitamin counter like you see a lot of like grandma and grandpas have um, <laughs> like the Monday has, Tuesday Wednesday ones the Monday Tuesday Wednesday ones but <laughs> Um, it has my B12 in it. It has DHA in it. It has vitamin D3 in it. It has um, my omegas in it. Um, and so it's very similar, I think, to how other people might supplement. So take taking like veganism out of it. What do you see a lot of bodybuilders doing? Religiously tracking their macros, making sure they get enough calories, making sure they get enough proteins, and making sure that they have either supplements in the form of protein powder or in the forms of vitamins that they right. need. So yeah, in all of that, I try to take a step back for people and be like, it's not much different than anything that you would do. You just use different foods. Yeah, exactly. It's just the stigma of being vegan. People are just like, they either think it's extremely healthy or extremely unhealthy. Like that's right. the two ways I hear it. Right. <laughs>
And it's yeah, kind of like, I, um, yeah, go I ahead, relate go ahead. to that a lot. I, I think I've gotten a number of comments from people just around, can you be healthy? Can you do it in the long term? And yet most of those are either trolls on Instagram or people who have no type of nutritional background, mm -hmm. but I've never had any doctors say anything about me. And funny enough, when I went to get my physical mm -hmm. last year, um, I went to mm -hmm. the Cornell's Medical Center and mm -hmm. they, they had a bunch of information just about a plant-based diet. Ha it happened to be in the office. So I like, like don't go to a vegan doctor. Yeah. <laughs> I go to some random person I found. <laughs> yeah. That's, um, I got my, uh, my, uh, my last blood test was uh, probably about a year ago now, but my um, mm -hmm. cholesterol levels, my LDL was like 44. And the- uh, Oh my God, <laughs> that's yeah, awesome. <laughs> The doctor was like, he's like, um, we're pretty friendly. He's like, this is yeah. the lowest uh, cholesterol level I ever saw besides people who have been on uh, statins. And he's wow. like, this is insane. Wow. <laughs> so like, he was like, dude, you're really healthy. That's crazy. But um, I never saw cholesterol levels that low unless they were on statins. So I yeah. thought that was pretty interesting because you can literally go on a plant-based diet and get your blood test before and after and see a massive drop in cholesterol and, you know, benefits yeah. and other blood levels but people right. still are skeptical about health benefits and yeah it's as long as you're doing it right you know totally and on that topic when I got my blood tested um actually last year mm -hmm. they checked everything for vitamins my protein levels all of that in my B12 was actually off the charts he was like you need <laughs> to cut your supplementation back yeah, <laughs> and yeah. you can't get like toxicity or anything from it yeah. but it just goes to show sometimes whatever's floating around on Google or Instagram is not fact. And I, for so long, took it, took it as fact. Um, but then once I actually saw the, the results, I was like, wow. So now I don't um, supplement as aggressively, but I also do use fortified milk and I also do eat a lot of nutritional yeast. And so it's probably a little bit of that Plus, I take one B12 pill a day instead of two. Right. And then also my protein levels are, were very, very high. And is so that albumin? Is that how they measure it? Sorry? Is that albumin? Is that how they measure protein levels? I'm like not that? sure. It just was listed as protein. And okay. then it was some scale that they used. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I noticed that on my blood test, too. I, like, uh, I think for some reason, I wanted to say it was called albumin on the blood test, but I'm Got not it. like yeah. a doctor or anything. <laughs> yeah. But um, I remember like the one number for protein was like super high and yeah, I never saw that before. So it was cool to see that for me. Yep, totally. Um, so what about like in terms of uh, if, if someone came to you who was interested in, in veganism, they already lift or something, what would you yeah. tell them in terms of like the best way to switch over, like the most effective way to switch diets? And what about even in terms of like programming? Would you sure. adjust anything or? Sure, so in terms of diet, my biggest advice to anyone looking to make any switch is to figure out what you're eating now and mm -hmm. what you need to be eating going forward for whatever your goals are. I think the biggest thing I see people mess up on is that they try to wing it. And then they'll blame the switch on them <laughs> basically on the diet or whatever change they made instead of the fact that like they were just pretty lazy. And I think that that personally is just a little bit irritating to me because I've heard a lot of people, especially some of the bigger lifters, like I saw um, Russell Orhe do vegan for a few days, Jessica oh, Bittner did vegan for a few days. Yeah, and then oh, I think awesome. she recently posted about how she was super hungry. Um, and so I have no idea what she ate, but those people have really big platforms and it can distort the level of success um, yeah. that someone can have on it. So anyway, I say all that to say that my biggest piece of advice is to figure out how many calories you need and what your macros are, or else you will not be successful on any type of diet. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, I think finding out and probably doing it slowly for most people, finding out what vegan foods you do like and what you don't like. Like, I don't suggest like going through your pantry and throwing everything away. Like that's just food waste. So eat what you want to eat and then also figure out what are some things you can easily incorporate. So for example, if you have like eggs and a bagel for breakfast every morning, bagels most of the time are vegan. 
vegan. So mm-hmm. replace the cream cheese or whatever butter with tofu or earth balance and then do tofu scramble instead. Or instead of doing your oatmeal with a whey protein, do it with a plant-based protein. So that's a really easy shift to make. Um, I think overnight. And in terms of programming, no, I I don't think there are any changes that need to be made. I don't think that at all being vegan is a disadvantage. I only think it's a disadvantage if somebody tries to wing it and they come from a background of eating meat. It's a different way of eating. So just being cognizant of all of that. Yeah, I totally agree. And I usually suggest the same thing, like just switch out the um, animal products for just the the vegan alternatives. It's, it's just that easy. Like you can switch to Guardian products for the meat. I usually say right. that because it's delicious. And it's kind of right. like, it's kind of like uh, friendly to people who don't really cook too. Exactly. You know, it comes with the sauce a lot of times and stuff. Right. Or, right. Yeah. And it's, it's this, the macros are pretty similar too, I think, which, right. you know, they're going to get enough protein. It's not like you're just switching, um, you know, uh, uh, for, for lentils, I guess. Like you're not switching totally. like chicken for lentils, even though lentils are pretty high or, I guess a better example might be like jackfruit, which has mm-hmm. like no protein, which is kind of marketed as a meat alternative. Right. Which, <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's a good point is I think some of the things that are marketed as meat alternatives or like high protein are actually aren't that high protein. Yeah, so sometimes. even beans, um, I think that beans are a great food in terms of the vitamins you get, you get a lot of fiber and you get protein, Mm -hmm. but you can't really compare beans to the protein level you'll get from four ounces of like a salmon or a And so I think, yeah, just being mindful of some of those things. um, Yeah, Uh, I think Renaissance periodization, you know those guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think they did uh, like a little infographic and it was like, um, don't like uh, beans are a good source of protein, but don't consider them like a main protein source necessarily. Like it's protein and carbs. It's, yeah. it's not just a source of protein. Totally. So like, I totally agree with them there because it is high in protein. I think it's like per serving, like what, like seven to 10 grams, maybe mm-hmm. um, give or take. And uh, right. you know, the carbs are still pretty high though, but you right. do get all the benefits of all the fiber and right you know, the other vitamins and minerals in there. So totally. Yeah. I usually suggest like try to track for a few days when you're switching diets. If you're a lifter, yeah, Yeah. uh, you know, if you're worried about that kind of stuff, would you you, you suggest that too? Yeah, I would definitely suggest that. Um, And uh, again, like it's tough for me to compare. I wish I had maybe started powerlifting before I went vegan. So I had some more points of comparison, but I mean, at my first for my first competition i think i was eating more of the like high carb less protein and i've had just the same results as when i started eating a yeah. crap load of protein and so i think that's also just a really interesting point as well is that different things might work for different people mm-hmm. um also work for different levels of pro for programming so Um, I mean, Bill programs uniquely for all of his athletes, but I found what worked for me, which happened to be eating like 3000 calories. I think I was eating over 500 grams of carbs, but I also was doing a lot of work and then also moving around a lot in New York. So yeah, now I try to be a little bit more cautious of posting just my, um, what I eat on the day to day because people take it out of context sometimes and and don't realize like what Mm -hmm. my composition is body wise. Right. So you mean like you'll, what do you mean exactly by that? You'll like post just a specific meal sometimes people will just be like, oh, you just eat that. That's like all carbs. So for example, I used to post my, a snapshot of chronometer, which would list everything that I ate that day. And they would also show um, basically how many grams of carbs, proteins, and fats I had eaten. And I'd get a lot of comments like, oh my God, you're eating so many carbs. I could never do that. And I wasn't posting it to show this is how you should eat. I was posting it because people would say, oh my God, you're like making so much progress in all of this stuff. And so I wanted to just show what I was eating in Mm -hmm. a certain instance so people could have a bit of an example. But also the bigger things outside of diet are again, sleep, who's doing your programming, staying healthy, um, and then also just managing stress levels. So I think that's where Instagram can, again, just distort it. People focus sometimes right. on stuff. Yeah, that's just like a snapshot in time. And everyone totally. wants to compare to themselves. And, you know, I, I get what you're saying now. Yeah. And another thing is, uh, <laughs> I was just thinking about carb fearing. It's like, 
they see yeah. me eating 500 grams of carbs and they're like, oh, I would totally get fat from that. Like, I can't eat right. any carbs. And that just comes down to education. Because totally. The, totally. <laughs> I work on set, so I hear like a lot of people just talk about uh you know nutrition stuff when we like eat lunch or like go to a craft services or something. And uh this one show I worked on, they they were all carb fearing. They'd all be like, Oh, like uh get those away from me, like talking about like muffins. And like yeah. I wanted to be like, dude, like these are probably like these are covered in like icing and stuff. Like it's right. probably <laughs> mostly fat. Like, at that point. Yeah. like what do you think vegetables are, dude? They're like right. mostly, you know, I don't I don't get it. Yeah, I mean, totally. I I see that a lot. I see it a lot, a lot. Um, and I think even I used to be of that mindset as well. Like I went to an all girls yeah. school from fourth grade through high school, and so the eating disorders, for example, were rampant. Um, yeah. Kind of growing up, and it was very much the culture of like, how can you stay as skinny as possible? And the discourse were was very much avoid carbs, avoid carbs, yeah, of course. <laughs> avoid carbs, when really once you start to understand nutrition and the fact that our bodies run most efficiently off of glucose, mm -hmm. and then you manage your fat intake accordingly, yep. like the results that just me personally, I was able to have were pretty great eating lots of, lots of carbs and moderate protein. Yeah. And like you and I both understand nutrition pretty well. Like also for lifting for years, we know what works well for our bodies, but yeah, it's, it's, I have to remind myself often that most people don't think like that and they don't understand right. the basics of nutrition. So, you know, you got to take a step back and be like, okay, this person just doesn't understand how this works. Totally. Totally. Yeah. And I've, I've had to remind that myself that as well, just because yep. I think more recently, and this is not good, but I'll get a little bit frustrated when people try to compare what I eat to what they're eating or where I am to where they they are. Yeah. Just because it's every person is so unique and everyone should view them, themselves that way. But then I have to take a step back and be like, I used to do that exact same thing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know. It's it's something that I have to remind myself often to um, just, you know, where I've, I, I came from and where I am now. And it's just right people aren't there yet or whatever yeah um but one other thing i, I wanted to talk about is uh you you kind of touched on it earlier and i think it'd be a good segue you said um you know some people who are vegan out there uh it, it, this kind of just pertains to like how everyone kind of um what's the word uh i guess uh stands up for what they believe in or or you know help i don't want to say pushy but like right. you said, some vegans are, they're not very, they don't want to express uh, how they feel about veganism exactly, or like they won't be outspoken about it. Um, and so just in terms of like uh, uh, advocating for social causes and such, like, yeah. do you want to kind of segue that into, um, you know, veganism and other social justice movements and stuff and the best way to do that and how you personally handle it? Sure. Yeah, I think I think it's a really good point, especially because in going back a few years, for me, when I first went vegan, what worked was paying attention to some of the images that are really hard to see and facing some of the hard facts in terms of how decisions I was making as a, a meat eater, as a consumer of animal products was impacting people who were um, either in different countries or working to produce those types of foods or the animals themselves or a planet. And so I think I actually gravitated a lot towards people who were using their platform to be pretty in my face and to be pretty direct about, no, every time you purchase an animal product, this is the effect that it has downstream. Or every mm -hmm. time you wear leather, this is the effect that it has downstream on either people, the planet, or animals. And so when I was first going vegan and becoming more comfortable I definitely was very outspoken about like, this is the effect that it's having. I would share a bunch of the, the videos. I would um, definitely try to advocate in any way so that people just knew because what I was coming from was that I just didn't know. And yeah. in a lot of ways, the way that food is presented to us is so we don't know. So for example, when you say that you're gonna eat a steak, 
you don't say that you're eating cow most of the time. Yep. Or when you say you're going to eat veal, you don't say that you're eating what the animal actually is. Mm -hmm. so there's this weird way that we disconnect from how we actually consume many things in our daily lives. Even I was thinking about this the other day, using my credit card instead of cash I'm so disconnected from the amount of money I spend versus if I had a hundred dollars and it was like five twenties, there is no way in hell I would just really quickly go somewhere and spend it. So anyway, the way that, that our lives are set up allows us to disconnect from so many things. Mm -hmm. And so as I was able to kind of grow a little bit of a following on Instagram, I felt a level of responsibility to show people like, it's you it's great to be able to celebrate vegan athletes but you also have to realize why a lot of people went vegan and i'm not doing it to be trendy and i'm not doing it just so that i can um have something that differentiates me at all from everybody else i'm doing it because i i have a deep level of empathy for the way in which my behaviors will, will affect other people and so that's just a little bit of context for why I was um, kind of really outspoken in the beginning. Yeah. And one thing that I've noticed either in like dating other vegans or just in building a community of vegans is that one, people tend to be pretty outspoken about their values and just their opinions. And then also tend to be very either aligned in some ways or not or have a level of compassion for other social justice causes. Yeah. Where I think people sometimes go wrong is by convoluting them and by making them mutually exclusive, when really it's a lot more complicated than somebody sharing a meme that equates animals to black people or that equates whatever it is to, to what's going on. And so I think for me, I've been impressed by some of the bigger name vegans that have used their platforms to also say, hey, if you're thinking about this vulnerable population in this way, mm -hmm. here's a way that you can frame it for another, for another cause. Mm -hmm. I think personally for me, especially again, being black and, and being female, you occupy a very interesting place i think in history and then also just in society mm -hmm. i haven't quite honestly spoken out as much about it and i majored in psychology and black studies and in college so obviously personally this is something that i've encountered every day of my life but i haven't personally spoken out as much about black lives matter specifically just because i think there are many opportunities for people who don't typically speak out or have to confront it on a daily basis to do a lot of work that black people have already been doing. So I think it's been a good opportunity and I've been pretty impressed quite honestly with how the vegan community has responded or how some of the bigger kind of Instagram <laughs> celebrities yeah. have responded yeah. in terms of in terms of talking about it. But I do I do and would love to still see more of the passion, I think, around it in, in many ways, mm -hmm. um, especially if someone can use their platform for something that in some ways is, is pretty similar. Um, but yeah, there, there's, a lot, there's a lot going on, <laughs> I think, especially just here in Brooklyn. And I, and I haven't been to any of the protests. It's, again, just not, not my thing. But um, I think it has been an interesting time to see how the vegan community responds to it. Yeah. Um, and one thing about vegans is that we all have in common is that we are empathetic, at least to some degree, you know, right. You know, some more than others, obviously, and some are more <laughs> right. <outspoken> than others. <laughs> um, <Sure. laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it's definitely, I, I've definitely noticed a lot of the big vegan pages, like plant-based news and stuff. They're like advocating a lot of like black owned vegan businesses and stuff. Right. Right. I've seen like uh, some vegan New York city food blogs and stuff posting yep. about specifically New York owned black businesses and stuff. And um, I just think that's, that's really awesome to see. And uh, like, like you said, like, I, I hope, I, I'm also happy with how long this, like, this is going on for. It's not just something yeah. that kind of faded out and fizzled out because of all these other things happening. And I don't know if that, you know, I, I don't know what exactly that ha has to do with. I don't know if people are more um, passionate this time. Like I, I hope they are. Uh, but a lot of people seem to get distracted and just, move on with their lives about things and this is i'm really happy to see that 
we're actually getting change out of this stuff and you know hopefully the police system can be reformed and everything and right it's going down a whole you know a whole train of thought here but sure it's just cool to see that and um you know, I hope it keeps going. And for me personally, like I, I'm not extremely, um, I guess my whole philosophy is I like to try to lead by example in terms of veganism. Totally. And, uh, I know a lot of people are more outspoken. I, I love that. I'm not like a very, uh, aggr- I don't want to say aggressive. I, I don't know. I'm kind of trying to pick my words carefully, yeah. <laughs> but, um, I, I, I kind of try to like lead people in to ask me questions and then be like, okay, um, this is kind of what I do. This is what you could do. This is why it's good. But I don't necessarily go out all the time and, you know, uh, post um, animal, uh, so like right. slaughterhouse footage and stuff. Right. Um, so I know, I know you said like I, you on Instagram, I really respect it because you post a lot of things that are like, uh, <laughs> they're like, uh, like vegan memes and stuff like that are just like funny, but they're so yeah. true. Yeah. And you'll, you'll just be straight up like, uh, you know, this is what's wrong. Like, this is how to fix it. This is what you're supporting. And I really respect that about the way that you post things. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, don't know. I appreciate I don't know that. Just... Sorry, I've, I've definitely gone off sometimes, but to be honest, and I think you, you're, um, you're really hitting on it nicely is that you have to find a way to be authentic online in a way that you are, I think, in person with people because what I've realized is when I would post some things where I would just really call people out or where I would post some of that footage yeah. I have this like lingering feeling of guilt and I was just like is that the right way to go about it am I just doing it because I see other people doing it or am I yeah. doing it because um, I'm just trying to make it like a little bit to sensationalize it like why am I actually doing it uh-huh. and so I think for me it's been it's been an evolution and so I post a lot less about it and I try to have to your point more conversations or have people just approach me and and ask like oh what like what is this um, because I found that it just works a little bit better for my personality um, and I will caveat that with saying I'm a pretty aggressive person <laughs> so I think I've I think I've had to learn though when it comes to uh, veganism it's just a it, it it's a way that it feels a little bit better for me to do it that way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Like I said, like, I'm not the kind of person who would just go up to somebody in real life and be like, Hey, hey you need to go vegan. You know? Right. Uh, I don't know if anyone really do that, but you see that a lot online. And I, I guess it's because of, yeah, um, totally. yeah, I guess it's just because it's like, there's like that uh, level of like anonymity, I guess. Yep. Uh, yep. Like, so yep. I try to do it in a way, like, like you said, like that makes me feel good. When I first got into veganism, I think this happens for a lot of people. They feel very, very passionate and they want to tell everybody yep. like what's wrong. And that, you know, you shouldn't be eating meat. You shouldn't be supporting the animal uh, agriculture industry, stuff like that. But um, I did that and I kind of just stressed myself out and just started to feel down because I thought about it all the time. And um, you know, like there's nothing you should think about it, but it was kind of wearing on me a little bit. And I kind of switched over just trying to lead by example more and just converse with people who wanted, or who were open to conversing about it and not just argue for the sake of arguing. Totally. Like, that shit just wears on me. <laughs> yeah, it, it was wearing on me too. It was wearing on me a lot. And then also you start to get DMs and then people try to argue with you about it. And, and I was like, yeah. I'm actually not going to argue because I feel like I don't have anything to prove. I also am a firm believer that the biggest way to make an impact is you either support things, people, whatever have you with with money. money. And so, yeah, like you, I think that there's so many ways people can just make a difference with their dollar and you don't need to be all in or, or all out about it. Um, But that to me has felt very good consistently. And then also I think, one of my personal goals is to just get as strong as possible on a vegan diet because that will get people's attention. Exactly. Um, especially because I think when I started lifting, my numbers were like, I don't even know, a 200, maybe 175 squat for, for three. Um, that's still good and, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, so it's still pretty good. Um, bench was maybe like 125, 115 at my first competition. And then my deadlift was right under, 
300 at my first competition. Mm -hmm. Um, So anyway, I think that I've taken a lot of pride in getting the vegan diet right. And I've taken a lot of pride in whenever I don't want to go to the gym, my biggest motivating factor, quite honestly, is that I want to show people that it can happen and that you can be very strong. And like, I'm not even at the top. Like there's so many other people, Evan Glassgold, who's was a candidate for the world's team, number one right right now for, I think he's the team three champion. Um, Sophia Rizzuto, she's top five in the country. Leah, as I mentioned, top five. Bill has been around the sport, a state record holder. Uh Um, And and those are just to name a few uh, vegans who have really paved the way and so many people who are doing it at the elite level. And again, that's just the U.S. (laughs) There are people outside of the U.S. So I think that's the way that we can kind of increase visibility and like show that you can do it, especially because Evan's newer to veganism, but Sophia was vegetarian for a number of years, has been vegan as long as I've been. Uh-huh. Um, and there are people who built their strength on, on a plant-based diet. So some of the times, even with like Torre or some of the other like NBA players you see going vegan, it's a lot of visibility, but they didn't build their strength being vegan. So I think there's definitely room for people like you and me to, to really change the way that it's perceived. So that's my like driving North Star is that I hope I can make an impact um, kind of on, on the animals in, in that way. Yeah, right. Did you catch, um, uh, do you know who Marco Galindo Jr. is? Yeah, I think I follow him. He's very guy, strong. Very, very so strong. He just posted yeah. like, I think, I, I forget the number, but it was like 750 for a double or something. And he weighs like, you know, he's probably a little above his competition weight, which is 181, but right. he probably weighs like, you know, upper 180s, something like that. Wow. It's just and is he natural? I mean, he claims natural, but I, I yeah, who knows? Like <laughs> someone, you know, you don't, I don't know his whole life history, so I don't right, know. Right, totally. But, yeah, uh, that, that's insane. That, that is, um, yeah, that, that's, it's, it's just <laughs> crazy to me. I think, and even over the past few years, how many people have like emerged or who you see yeah. now, now coming up, um, I think is great. I, there's another girl who was the team three champion who's vegan. I forget her name, Um, but yeah, there's some really, some really strong. Yeah, there's like Clarence Kennedy and uh, this other dude I just found on Instagram not too long ago. I think you follow him because I think I saw it. Evan Cardone or something or Cardone. Oh yeah. Um, So I I used to follow him. I don't anymore because I think he's a little obnoxious. Uh. Not a little. (laughs) I think he's very obnoxious, Um, but he's very strong. You know, there's no, like numbers are numbers. Yeah, I mean, I'm impressed by anybody deadlifting over. Uh, honestly, if I see someone in the gym deadlifting four plates, I'm like, okay, that person lifts. Like, right. you know, for a guy, like if totally. If I, if I see a girl deadlifting 225, like that's fucking awesome too. Like that's yeah. yeah. Anyone who's like seriously trying to lift, like that's cool. I mean, I'm not right. someone who's particularly like genetically blessed to be strong at all. Like, I'm better at just staying lean. But um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I respect anybody who's out there just doing their best. I mean. I I still have yet to hit a 500 pound deadlift, but uh, I'm just doing my best. (laughs) Same. I mean, I I hear you so much. I'm not built for this sport at all. I'm 5'7". I'm like 5'9 or something in my squat shoes. And so whenever I go get my rack height, they're like, are you sure this is what you want? (laughs) And I have like long arms and long legs. Yeah, you have long femurs, right? Sorry? You have long femurs, right? I have very long femurs. Okay. Um, Also, the way that my hips sit, yeah. It's just not as great for squatting. So I've had a lot of issues, like just a lot of issues with that and like with my lower back and sciatica stuff. I was so, going to say, I was going to ask about lower back because uh, I know yeah. as a trend, people with longer femurs seem to get lower back pain more from powerlifting. Like, yeah. Like, you know, Lane Norton? Yeah. He's like very outspoken for always saying he has long femurs and he squats very, or he used to squat very, uh, uh, like uh, very bent over. Like yeah, kind of almost looked like he got folded. <laughs> like yeah, yeah. Spots. And he had a huge history of lower back pain. I think he kind right. of um, adjusted his form and stuff, and he's been doing a bunch of like uh, Stuart McGill kind of back rehab rehab stuff and whatnot. Yeah. But, uh, I just I also think I have longer femurs, and I have lower back pain from or I I did at least from right. doing a lot of low bar squats and conventional deadlifts like heavy, but. uh that, that sucks because you really need to be built well for powerlifting to never get injured. 
Totally. I mean, and also just saying never, I mean, you'll, you'll probably get injured powerlifting at some point, I feel like. So, I mean, I don't know any elite lifters uh, or even people, as soon as you start lifting a certain amount times your body weight, it's just bound to happen and with the yeah. level of frequency. Yep. So I actually, taking a step back, I haven't had as much lower back pain, thankfully, but it's been just a lot in my hips that I think is from my lower back, even mm -hmm. though the pain doesn't present there. Because yeah. uh, I've noticed even sitting at home, like now that we're in lockdown and, and whatnot, um, I just sit so much of the day and it's yeah. definitely affecting everything. So before I lift, I try to like go and walk around just so I can like loosen up. Yeah. Wait, just out of curiosity, I didn't get to ask this earlier, but before you got the, uh, the lifting equipment, what were you doing like at home? Yeah. Um, so I was doing like air squats, push ups, which I freaking hated. Yeah. I was doing everything that I, everything that I like hate, like every accessory that, <laughs> that, that I would want to avoid. But yeah. yeah, Bill put together this like whole program, which was five days a week and, and it was great. And then I made just my own weights. So I took like a pillowcase and then put a bunch of books in it, use that to do rows. I was doing like step ups. Um, he put some cardio in there that I just told him I wasn't going to do. So he added another <laughs> lifting day. I hate cardio. I oh. hate it so much. Um, and I've actually been leaner lifting, not doing cardio. Um, but yeah, so I was doing a lot of, a lot of that stuff and a lot of like core and ab work, uh -huh. but I think it's definitely harder to build strength versus lose strength. Um, cause it's come back pretty quickly. Yeah. yeah. Do you think that um, just doing the air squats and the push-ups maintained a lot of your strength? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I, I, I think so. But I also think what was unique for how I trained is that, I mean, I was squatting four days a week. Um, okay. And I was benching, I think, four and deadlifting maybe once a week before mm -hmm. I got injured. And then I was just religious about doing my at-home stuff. I think what I've seen is that people will do, you know, you saw like the push-up challenges and all of yeah. that. Um, it was like the Murph challenge that was really popular right. for a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and then people get bored and then they just don't do anything. So I, I think what I learned was doing something is better than nothing and trying to still watch your diet and not gain a lot of fat yeah. um, is, is helpful as well. Not that there's anything wrong with gaining weight at all, but just in terms of like making a rebound on comp, like body comp it's uh -huh. a little bit easier if you don't like go too far one way or the other because you also don't want to lose a bunch of weight yeah for sure um one thing that i noticed is that when i was uh so i was doing like weighted push-ups and pull-ups and uh mm -hmm. you know i saw you doing a lot of that stuff and i was like oh my god he is not messing around <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was like i was like dad you still look ripped and you're doing all this stuff so i yeah i noticed that <laughs> I was like throwing like the 90 pound because I got uh, the yeah. book, like, adjustable dumbbells. I was like throwing that in a backpack and doing push ups with it. And right. I found because I came to my parents' house about um, a couple weeks ago to come visit. Yeah. And my, I, you know, like I said, I work in film. My job is dead right now. I have no work. Right. So I'm just here, but I, they have lifting equipment here, like a, a cheap Olympic bar. And uh, oh, that's program. amazing. And I found that I really maintain most of my strength from just doing weighted push ups and, and uh, right. Squats with bands and dumbbells. Yep. Oh, squats with bands. I was doing that too. And deadlifts with bands. I hate so, it. So yeah, I, I hated it too. And I like smacked myself with the band so much. <laughs> also, um, I realized you might need to cut this out, but I'm um my computer's dying a little bit. Oh, it's bit. all good. I was actually yeah. I was gonna try to wrap it up soon because I feel oh, perfect. Like this long. <laughs> perfect. So yeah, so all right, we th this is a great conversation and uh Thank you so much for, for taking the time. I know this, this is probably about an hour now. Uh, so just to wrap it up, where people find you on social media and such? Yeah, sure. So um, I have Instagram and my handle's Banana Lips. Cool. I also think I have a Facebook page as well, but I never post on it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Instagram is probably the, the place that's best. Okay, sweet. And uh, yeah, Anna's extremely fucking strong and she's vegan and super motivational and nice. So go follow <laughs> her if anyone watched, listen to this whole thing. <laughs> and, uh, Anna, thanks so much for taking the time. And uh, I'll just end the recording now, but uh, if you want to stay on for a couple of seconds after. Perfect. Uh, so I'll see you guys later. <laughs>